Hey folks, today it's all about Harmony Theory and this is a tutorial uh, aimed at beginners. So let's start. Um, the smallest bit of information you have on melodies and chords is the note. And that's what uh, Harmony Theory is all about. It's grouping the right notes together to produce a certain feel. And the easiest way of grouping uh, notes together is uh, selecting all keys. So we started here with C3 and select every note until up until uh, C4. And this is exactly uh, one octave of notes and it's also called C chromatic scale. If we start again with the root note of C and select only the white keys uh, up until C4, we get our first major scale, C major scale, because the root note is C. You can already see a scale consists of a root note, in our case it's C3, and a mode, in our case it's major, so C major. If we go on and use exactly the same notes from the C major scale, clone it and transpose it one semitone down until the root note lies exactly on B, then we build our second scale, B major scale. Pretty easy, right? We can repeat that process for the root note of A. So we have A major scale. And you maybe you can already see the possibilities of this trick. Um, if you can build the C major scale on the keyboard, which is basically only the white keys from C to C, then you can build every other major scale on the keyboard. Just use the notes, transpose it around until the root note is on the key you want to have. Let's build the A minor scale. Start at A and select every white key up until A3, one octave above, and we have A minor scale. And you already see the differences between A major and A minor. Just by choosing a different starting point, in our case A, and selecting every white key, we build a different mode, A minor. And you can see the differences pretty clearly. There are different notes selected. You can continue with this for all keys on the keyboard. For instance, if you start at G, select all white keys up until the next G, you have G Mixolydian. If you start at D, you have D Dorian and so on. You can use this knowledge to build basically every scale and mode. Here we just built the C minor scale from the A minor scale. Just um, select the notes, transpose it around until you hit the right root note. And you can clearly see the difference again between the C minor scale and the C major scale just by selecting the white keys only choosing a different starting root note. Okay, that's maybe a bit much for the start, but if you watch it again and again, you will get it. It's pretty easy, pretty easy concept. Let's get back to the start. At the beginning, we uh, selected every note on the octave, which results in 12 semitones. Scales that have 12 semitones in it are classified as a chromatic scale. And of course, you can transpose it around until you have uh, a root note you want and you have a chromatic scale of that root note. The next scales are classified as heptatonic or better in our case as diatonic scales because they have exactly seven semitones in it. The top notes are obsolete because they are basically just a duplication of the root note and um, yeah, we don't need it. It was just for the purpose of the tutorial. There's one scale category missing and it's a pentatonic scale. And you can uh, create it by starting at D sharp, selecting all black keys on the keyboard and you have a five tone scale. And just like with all other chords, you can simply transpose the notes around to create different scales. In our case, C pentatonic scale. And as it looks, the pentatonic scale also has modes. In our case, it is the minor mode because we use D sharp as root. If you use F sharp as root, you get the major mode in the pentatonic scale. 
There are of course more modes to the pentatonic scale than just minor and major, but to keep this tutorial simple, I leave them out. If you try to compare a pentatonic major scale with a diatonic major scale, you will notice that it's just a subset of the diatonic uh, scale. So there are basically uh, in the scale of the diatonic major, but there are two notes missing. So it's just a subset, a five tone subset of the diatonic scale, if you want. What can we do with this knowledge now? First, of course, we can create mm. melodies with notes that are in a harmonic relation. If we choose D sharp pentatonic as a scale for our song, we have a pre-selection of notes we can use. In this example, I draw notes on all black keys that center around D sharp. If you stay in the scale, everything sounds harmonic. The pentatonic scale is perfect for catchy pop melodies or funky bass lines. It can be supplemented with additional notes from the diatonic scales at any time and of course transposed to any root key. Limiting yourself to one scale can be a great starting point for further creative ideas. Okay, let's find some chords. That's easy, because we've already found our scales. Let's just use C major as an example. We find the first chord by drawing in the root note, skipping the next note of the scale and again drawing in a note, and then skipping the next note. We find the next chord the same way. This time we just start with the second note of the scale and repeat the whole thing until we have all the notes drawn in. We have found all chords in the scale C major, each of which has its own Roman number. Each diatonic scale has seven basic chords, and if you look closely, you will notice a pattern. I transpose all chords down to illustrate this more clearly. We have in the seven chords three major chords and four minor chords. Major chords consist of the fundamental, a four semitone interval, and a three semitone interval. With the minor chords, it is exactly the other way around. The last chord in our scale is a bit different or special. It's a minor chord with a flat or diminished 5. Now that we know the mode of our chords, we have to correct the Roman numbers, because they are written in lower case when they are in minor and a small circle at the top when there are diminished triad. There are also names for each interval or each semitone step on the scale. Ok, let's transpose the chords back and we move on to the next topic. So we just created a 1, 5, 6, 4 progression. And you can build your own chord progressions from scratch, but it's much easier to start with already established ones. But if you want to start from scratch, then there are some tricks. For instance, you can use the chord functions. Uh, each chord is a member of a chord function family. So we have the tonic function, then we have the dominant function and the predominant chords. And each of that function has a function, as the name says. So the tonic transmits rest and stability, the dominant transmits tension and instability, and the predominant chords are a middle ground between the two. And you can make use of that in chord progression building. And if we look at our established chord progression, you can see the tonic, the dominant and the predominant. Pretty easy, right? 
So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And of course, this is not complete. There's a lot of more stuff to learn in harmony theory. And yeah, that's maybe a good starting point for you. Until next time, see you and bye.